announcing the portable Sunday dinner by Colonel Sanders. He cooks up Kentucky Fried Chicken in his kitchen, then packs it up in his handy bucket. All you do is pick it up. Imagine, the best meal of the week travels everywhere, every day of the week. Okay, Colonel, hit the road. This is the man in the white outfit who created the chicken with the 11 herbs and spices. Harlan Sanders was born outside Henryville, Indiana, in 1890 and struggled from an early age. He was brought up by a very pious mother who taught him that drinking alcohol, smoking tobacco, drinking coffee, and playing cards were all equally dangerous. Sanders had to start making his own way in the world at the age of 12 because his mother had married a man who wasn't very thrilled on the idea of stepchildren. While attending school, he worked on a farm, and when that became too difficult, he dropped out of seventh grade after just two weeks. He worked as a streetcar conductor, a railroad fireman, a midwife, a riverboat ferry operator, and more during the course of the following three decades of his life, mainly failing at all of these endeavors. Sanders married at the age of 18 and had three children during this time. After Sanders was sacked from the railroad, his wife left and went to live with her parents in Alabama. According to Sanders' autobiography, Sanders attempted to kidnap his own children, but was unsuccessful, so he reluctantly made up with his wife. After nearly 40 years, the pair would eventually divorce and go their own separate ways. When Harlan Sanders started selling food to tourists from the back room of the Shell petrol station he owned in Corbin, Kentucky at the age of 40, his life would never be the same. In contrast to the conventional diner food available along the roads, he became popular with tourists by selling his traditional country cooking, which included country ham, okra, biscuits, string beans, and other similar foods. Ironically, the menu did not initially include fried chicken. Fried chicken took too long to prepare, so it wasn't a feasible option for a quick diner meal. To advertise his small diner at the Shell Station, Sanders would spray paint enormous signs on nearby barns. Matt Stewart, the owner of a nearby competitor Standard Oil Station, was extremely displeased with his clever marketing strategy. Stewart started covering up his signage with paint, because of which Sanders and two Shell district managers paid him a visit. They weren't prepared for Stewart to have a gun, which he used to shoot and kill one of the supervisors. Stewart was shot in the shoulder by Sanders, who had his own gun concealed in his coat. Stewart was sent to prison for murder, and Sanders became the gas station king of Kentucky after charges against him were dropped. If you only knew Colonel Sanders for one thing, it was probably his chicken. The second thing to remember is that he is a colonel. You might even believe that Colonel is his given name. Harlan Sanders did serve in the army, but he was not that kind of colonel. He claimed to be 15 or 16 years old when he enlisted in the army in 1906. He served in Cuba for roughly six months before being honorably dismissed, perhaps as a result of it being discovered how young he actually was. It should be fairly obvious that he didn't have enough time to advance to the rank of colonel in this period. What gives then? Harlan Sanders actually had the most honorific title awarded by the governor of Kentucky, the Kentucky Colonel, which was afterwards held by Muhammad Ali and Bob Barker. Because his chicken was so delicious, Sanders was promoted to colonel by Governor Ruby Lafoon in 1935 and once more in 1949. Fried chicken wasn't on Colonel Sanders' early menu because it took too long to cook. Then, in 1939, Sanders made what is likely the greatest significant advance in chicken history. He started using a pressure cooker to fry his chicken, which significantly reduced the cooking time while remaining quality. Sanders was also perfecting his renowned blend of 11 herbs and spices at this point and it was primed for spectacular success. And just in time, too. In 1935, Duncan Hines' travel book, Adventures in Good Eating, listed Sanders' first cafe after a gas station as a must-visit location. Now a household name, 
Sanders had transformed his 142-seat restaurant from a back room in a gas station. At 49 years old, it appears as though Sanders had finally achieved success after a variety of odd jobs and shootouts. At 49 years old, it appeared as though Sanders had finally achieved success after a variety of odd jobs and shootouts. He had to deal with some negative news first, though. Colonel Sanders experienced a couple of professional setbacks in the early 1950s. According to the New Yorker, once the intersection of the highway that ran in front of his cafe was shifted, a new interstate highway was constructed that completely diverted traffic away from his location. After 10 years of prosperity, Sanders appeared to be in trouble. At the age of 65, he was living solely off his savings and a monthly social security check of $105 after selling his company at an auction in 1956 at a significant loss. Fortunately, franchising would be his saving grace, and according to history, Sanders taught his chicken frying methods to friend Pete Harmon in Salt Lake City. Harmon, who happened to run one of the biggest restaurants in the area, became Sanders' first franchisee, and began selling the chicken under the name Kentucky Fried Chicken, and in the soon-to-be trademark bucket. After Harmon's popularity, other businesses wanted to offer Sanders chicken and worked out a deal to pay him four cents for each chicken cooked using his method. With pressure cookers and a big bag of spices, Sanders slept in his 1946 Ford while he traveled the nation in search of franchisees. He discovered them everywhere. By 1963, Sanders was selling his chicken in over 600 restaurants across the US and Canada. Pete Harmon would be a very significant factor in Colonel Sanders' rising success. In addition to being Sanders' first franchisee, coming up with the name Kentucky Fried Chicken and selling via bucket, Harmon is credited with the term finger licking good and the concept of independent KFC restaurants, according to Smithsonian Magazine. More than 300 KFC locations in Utah, California, Nevada, and Washington would be owned by Harmon alone, and he went on to become a millionaire. When he sold Kentucky Fried Chicken to a group of investors for $2 million in 1964, the colonel himself became a millionaire too. According to the New Yorker, he was hesitant at first, but the investors persuaded him by promising that they would never alter his formula, and that he could remain with the business as an advisor and brand ambassador, serving as the company's physical representation. The new owners felt having a living, authentic company symbol was a great asset, and they were right. The Colonel was soon making appearances on The Tonight Show and Mary Griffin, as well as an endless number of television commercials and other advertisements, with KFC spending $24 million on advertising in 1970, compared to half a million in 1964. A big part of the Colonel's success as an advertising icon was his trademark look, his white hair, white beard, and white suit. After receiving his second commission as a Kentucky Colonel in 1949, he made the decision to fully embrace the Southern gentleman stereotype. Sanders began donning a string tie and growing out his facial hair. He started out in a black frock coat, but quickly realized that the all-white suit better concealed flower stains and changed to it. He also began bleaching his beard and mustache to match his naturally white hair. He wore his suit every day, and indeed, it was the only thing he wore in public for the last 20 years of his life and not just for advertisements or TV appearances. He had a light cotton version he wore in summer, and a heavy wool version he wore in the winter. The suit had grown to become so iconic that authentic suits owned and wore by the Colonel have been known to fetch up to $80,000 at auction. Additionally, the Colonel may be recognized in actors as varied as Daryl Hammond, Norm MacDonald, Jim Gaffigan, George Hamilton, Rob Riggle, and Billy Zane, because to the outfit and facial hair, Colonel Sanders continued to represent the business and put in 200,000 miles annually visiting franchises and appearing on television. However, once he left his position as CEO, the corporation underwent developments that Sanders grew to dislike. Sanders dreamed about a gravy that was so good, quote, it'll make you throw away the darn chicken and just eat the gravy. The Colonel's Gravy was not created by Post Sanders' other KFC franchises, though, because they claimed it was too expensive. The Colonel, although being a brand ambassador, didn't like having his recipes altered in this way and wasn't afraid to tell people so. 
When he went to franchises, he would call the gravy, quote, goddamn slop, and he would dump the meal on the ground. Even worse, he described the gravy as pure wallpaper taste in an interview with the Louisville Courier Journal. He further said that the new crispy recipe was nothing in the world but a goddamn fried dough ball stuck on some chicken. His criticism of KFC was so harsh that the company he founded sued him for libel in 1978. The case was thrown out, but if you think that's the end of the story, don't worry, it happened again. In the 1970s, however, when Sanders was now in his 80s, his solution was somewhat different. He and his once mistress, now wife Claudia, opened a new competing restaurant that served food that rose to the Colonel's standards. The restaurant, known as Claudia Sanders, the Colonel's Lady Dinner House, would sell sit-down style dinners of ham and lobster in addition to chicken. Sanders attempted to expand this business into a chain as well, but KFC wasn't thrilled about that and sued them for $120 million. The suit was settled for $1 million and Sanders sold the restaurant. Sanders died in 1980 at age 90 of acute leukemia. However, the Colonel's death was only the beginning and KFC lives on in the hearts of billions across the world. Thanks for watching. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more videos about pop culture icons are coming out soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss